Hello friends and welcome to Miscellany number 12 for 2020. I'm Mike Birmingham. In this edition we ask, whose desk was that? Also, what was a memorable postcard collection? Why does the US use Fahrenheit instead of Celsius for temperature uh, readings? And also we see a hoodwinked apprentice and we ask what is a monker illusion finally hearing some words on happiness. First to our brain teaser, it cannot be seen, it cannot be felt, it cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. It lies behind stars and under hills and it fills in empty holes. What is it? Answer at the end of this miscellany. Back in time for a vintage photograph now. This is a picture of a desk. It's covered in documents, papers, letters, magazines and notes. Also visible, a pipe, a tobacco jar and a jar of ink. Obviously an old picture, perhaps that of a teacher or academic or scientist. In fact, what we're looking at here is a photograph taken of Albert Einstein's desk on the day following his death. The picture tells us a number of things, that Einstein wasn't expecting to pass away. He was obviously still greatly immersed in his work and projects. It's a testament to one of the great minds of his time or any time. Who knows what other discoveries he could have made had he lived on. Back in time for some Irish nostalgia now. Older viewers may remember a time when postcards were regularly sent home when you were on holiday. They were also handy for entering postal competitions and sending best wishes and such like. One such collection of these memorable in Ireland were those produced by John Hind. Always very colourful, they showed a rose-tinted view of Ireland as a place full of sunshine and colour. John was born in Somerset in England, settling in Dublin in the 1950s where he founded his company to produce and distribute his colour pictures of Ireland. His method was blending Irish stereotypes like donkeys and red-headed children and all of that with the lush, seemingly endless, beautiful landscape and bright colours. The series of photographs was a huge success, not only with tourists but with Irish people also. Hind would sometimes enhance the colours in his studio to get the desired effect. Some events from this week back in time include December 7th, 521 AD, birth of St. Colum Kill, Irish bard and monk honoured in all Celtic lands, also known as Columba, the monk who became the most important Scottish saint of his era, founding a monastery in Iona in 536 AD. December 8th, death of James Hoban, the Kilkenny architect who designed the White House. 1881, birth in Longford of Padraig Colum, playwright, poet and novelist. 1939, the birth of Belfast flute player, Sir James Galway. 1945, John Banville, the novelist, was born in Wexford. December 10th, 1960, Kenneth Branagh, actor, director, was born in Belfast. December 12th, 1920, the birth of Christy Ring in Cloyne County Cork. His 24-year career record earned him a reputation as the greatest hurler of all time. 1966, the birth of Sinead O'Connor. 1993, Ireland's first and Radio Aaron's own agony aunt, Frankie Byrne, whose legendary programme with its Dear Frankie, Letters of advice was broadcast from 1963 to 1985, passes away at the age of 71. And December 15th, 1930, Edna O'Brien, novelist and short story writer, is born. Question of the week, why does the US use Fahrenheit instead of Celsius in their temperature readings? Virtually every other country in the rest of the world uses the Celsius temperature scale, part of the metric system which denotes the temperature at which water freezes at 0 degrees and the temperature that it boils at is 100 degrees. But the US and a few other holdouts, the Cayman Islands, the Bahamas, Belize and Palau, they're still on the Fahrenheit scale, in which water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees. So shorts and t-shirts weather for us would be around 21 degrees Celsius and for the Fahrenheit equivalent you're looking at 70 degrees. 
Oh, Fahrenheit was created by uh, his namesake, a German scientist, Daniel Fahrenheit, who in the early 1700s was the first man to design alcohol and mercury thermometers. And they were both precise and consistent, two very important things. His great mechanical skill was in working with glass, you see, and that helped him to carry out his designs. System sounded pretty good to officials in the British Empire. They adopted Fahrenheit as their standard temperature scale, which is how it became established in the American colonies of the time. Meanwhile, though, in 1742, a Swedish astronomer named Anders Celsius came up with a less unwieldy system based on multiples of 10. So the neat 100 degree symmetry of the Celsius scale made it a natural fit for the metric system which was formally developed by the French in the late 1700s. But the English speaking world nevertheless clung on stubbornly to its preference for awkward units, uh, the imperial scale, pounds and inches and so forth. Fahrenheit going along with all this but finally in 1961 the UK Met Office switched to using Celsius to describe temperatures in their weather forecasts in order to be consistent with most other European countries. Most of the rest of the world followed suit but still the exception is the US and some other countries as well. Now in the don't try this at home department this is crazy. I know we all like things to be aesthetically pleasing, but this is someone attempting a flat screen TV in the days before flat screen TVs in their house, with the back of the TV obviously sticking outside the rear of the building. Uh, the only problem with this is I wouldn't fancy trying to plug that TV or switch it on after its chassis has been sticking out in the cold weather, rainy weather, frosty weather, whatever weather. Overnight, you uh, might just hear a boom or something like that. Now, apprentices are often hoodwinked on their first days on the job. It's not a new phenomenon. I remember a story told to me of one such individual working in a hotel in Galway who was asked to go over to the nearby Garda station and ask for a long wait. The Garda on duty was a little amused by this and he said, uh, look, have a sit down and I'll go and see how we got one of those. Left him there for an hour, came back and said, I think you've had enough of a long wait. You better go back to the hotel and to work. In any event, here's another up-to-date example of this apprentice who is quite literally asked to collect the sparks. Well, we give him 10 out of 10 for effort. Well done there. Now, Radio Memories, as we go back 30 years, a short comedy sketch I developed called the Mini Theatre. This one features a colleague of mine, Dermot Layden, ordering a taxi from moi. Presenting another Mini Theatre. In today's exciting episode, we eavesdrop on a telephone conversation. I'm coming, I'm coming. Hello? Uh, uh, hello, hello. Uh, is, is that the taxi man? Ah, it is. It's the taxi man here. I, I, good. I, I need a taxi, and I need it in a hurry. Uh, I've well, got... I, yeah, I, you do taxis, don't you? Well, we do. We have lots of taxis, surely. We, we, you want a taxi around there, do you? I, I tell you, I have to get to the, the station for the 10 o'clock train. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I will, sir, sir. <laughs> we'll get an old taxi around to you there as, as quick as we can. But you uh, don't worry at all, dear, because that old train is always late. <laughs> I tell you, it'll be late today anyway, because I'm the train driver. <laughs> I will bless us and save us. You've been listening to another mini theater. Tune in next time, same time, same station. Now here's what's called a Munker Illusion. This one by David Novick at Novick Prof. It's called Confetti. Most people will see four colors, but despite what you may see, it turns out that all the circles are actually the same color. The differences are subtle. 
And also, it depends on the size of the image when you view it, Dr. Novik tweeted. Our brain teaser answer. It cannot be seen, cannot be felt, cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. It lies behind stars and other hills and fills in empty holes. What is it? Did you get it? We're talking about darkness. Another one for the witty collection, I guess. The happiest of people don't have the best of everything. They just make the best of everything. A couple of things I've found over the last week or so. Hope you enjoyed watching. Any thoughts or comments, please share with me in the comments below and keep sharing forward to grow our family of miscellany watchers. Appreciate you looking in. Be safe and be well. And until next time, bye for now. From the home studio of Michael Birmingham.